The head gives not the proof of true messiahship, for man, by means of intellect, can never know of God nor bring himself to walk in light. And that's why we always say that truth is not in our head. It's when we take that truth, the teachings, the understandings, the wisdom, and bring it down into our heart, and then begin to walk and live the truth. And then as we walk and live the truth, we know the truth because we are the truth. And that's the, the walk that we're all walking right now. At the beginning of every age comes the Messiah. And then the Messiah and Christ are one. So we're now moving into the Aquarian age. And it is the age of enlightenment. It's the age of being who we truly are. This is the beginning of the perfect age. And so all of us have the opportunity now to begin to unhook from the past patterns, shoulds, guilt, have tos, and be that radiant, unique light I am. It's awesome when we begin to take that step. Our life changes. And when our life changes, our world changes, we begin to experience a whole new way of living that we could never see when we looked at life from our lower identity, from our humanness. As we begin to acknowledge that the Christ, see, we're, we're supposed to bring forth that Christ light that's within us now. Each and every one of us bring forth that Christ and allow that Christ to free us from limitations. <coughs> allow the Christ within to save us from past patterns. To begin to walk free and unlimited through life. Human being. We're human beings. Well, humans divine. Divine man being. Look down at planet Earth and look at all those divine man being. Being who they are, being their unique expression, being their unique quality, their gift. And not because someone told them how to act or told them what they had to do. But that knowing that they are good, they are that good thought of God, and it is their right and opportunity and blessing to express their beingness. Divine man being. Being divine man. It's an awesome concept. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> Life is the gift. And we can be the giver of greater life and greater gifts on planet Earth. See, we are spirit, we are divine, and we are human. And we've been living to our human identity and living to our human limitations. And in this new age, we have the opportunity to now turn to that light recognize it as our true identity that we are spirit, we are spiritual beings, we are good, we are loved, and we all have the capacity to give that love in our world to the world, and that love that we give allows for transformation. And then as we begin to give that love, you know what happens? All those shoulds get erased from our mind. All that guilt gets taken off our shoulders. We begin to walk a little taller. We begin to move a little freer through this life experience here on planet Earth. Science is so uh, enlightened now. I guess it always has, but we live in a time now where uh, spirituality and science are just really getting close. Understanding <clears throat> creation. And I love to to kind of get into like the quantum nature of reality. And, and we look at that quantum nature of reality really, for the most part, on a surface level, and even a scientific level.
because it's fascinating, it's cool. And I think one of the most uh, fascinating concepts uh, when I first started studying it a little bit was that uh, like scientists, when they're performing an experiment, you know, and they've got all their test tubes and petri dishes set up over here, uh, just when they walk into that room, their consciousness affects the outcome of that experiment. You see, our consciousness is not contained within this body. See, we're energy beings, we're radiating out all the time. We're like this really cool waveform. And this is the point where we've solidified. But our energy doesn't stop here. And that's why we're beginning to understand the relationship when one is healed, all are healed, because we are one. We might not be able to see those strands of energy connecting us all. They're there. <laughs> So as we begin to understand that we are the thoughts of God, that we are good, kind, loving, creative, and have the freedom to express that uniqueness, that's what begins the transformation within ourselves and within our planet. So it's really important for us to be aware of the thoughts that we're holding, the idea or the uh, identity that we're claiming. And that may sound simple, and it is simple, but it's real powerful. <clears throat> because we, if we identify with our humanness, and, and what you see is what you get, then we're locking into a big old mindset of limitation. And we've been moving through that limitation for a long time. And we're being asked now to, to get out of the box, to expand. And the only way that we can do that is, is to, to shift into our spiritual identity, access our spiritual nature, <coughs> access the support of the universe in all that we do in whatever uh, position we may hold. Maybe it's time to redefine certain positions on our planet. Maybe it's time to redefine our relationship with one another. Maybe it's time to redefine our relationships that we have with law, what we have with religion. You see, we're always evolving, which we're supposed to do. And so our step now in our evolution is to begin to see ourselves differently. And as we begin to see ourselves differently, we begin to think differently. And as we begin to think differently, we begin to act differently. And next thing you know, we're new. New age, new thought, new way of living. It's a good thing. It's where we're at. So it's important to, to take thoughts that support your divinity, that your spirituality, and love them. Give them a space to, to live within you, to live within your consciousness. Because when they are allowed to live within your consciousness, your identity changes and everything else changes. That's the blessing of where we are now. That's what's going to allow us. We'll never escape duty if we stay in our humanness, in our human identity we'll be given more duty to do. There's no escape. <coughs> when Jesus was in India and he talked with the Sudras, which was the lowest caste in India, and they were so sad. We toil and toil, we, don't, we look forward to nothing else but toil. There was no hope. And he said, my brothers, God's our father. Begin to shift the way that you look at toil. See, a lot of times we look at toil or maybe the not-so-fun things in our life as not good. But those may be the times when we grow the most. <clears throat> 